Update the 5th of May 2019. This phone has been super reliable and has been updated to Android Pie with up to the April 2019 security updates so good job Huawei for keeping up with Google's updates. Also, I grew a little tired of the ugly layout of EMUI so I am using Nova Launcher and everything has a perfect layout now. This phone is cheaper than when I bought it, so don't hesitate to get this device. Mine is still super fast. Also, check out some attached camera samples and the Nova Launcher layout. This phone is great. I bought it on sale as a second phone while I shipped my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus off to be fixed. I initially wanted something cheap and basic, but I was continually drawn to this. I am so glad I didn't settle for a $100 Nokia or Motorola. This phone has a screen just a notch below my Samsung, better speakers, a better in hand feel and some other spec improvements. As a phone on sale for $550, I don't think there is a better option out there. It makes me have buyer's remorse for getting locked into a contract with a $850 Samsung that I am not in love with anymore. Get this phone while it's on sale. I am not sure it is worth the original MSRP of $800 due to a lack of wireless charging, quad HD, and expandable memory. Still a great phone. I have been waiting for this phone since its announcement months ago. I am coming from a Mate 9, Mate 7 before that, and a Mate 2 before that, so I expected to love this phone. I am not loving it. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful phone and the edge-to-edge -edge screen is a huge improvement, but for the money I was expecting something better. It's thin, and I love that, and it's faster than the Mate 9, but not as fast as I expected. The 6GB RAM is more than enough, but didn't make a huge appreciable difference except when I was viewing graphic intensive or had multiple apps going. It could be the software, and I am allowing for that before I decide if I am keeping it. But the software is a tad glitchy and it froze during some web browsing and lagged a few times in some of my apps. I did not expect that from this phone. My apps transferred over within 20 minutes, as did all the usual contacts, pics etc. But nowadays that is the norm and I think most Android users have come to expect a seamless transition to a new device. The sound is good and calls are arguably great with noise cancelling mics. It's still the EMUI, which I don't mind because you can use whatever launcher is your preference. But the setting menus just aren't as improved as ID hoped for. I think, at this point, the UI should feel more intuitive and polished than it does. The menus are clunky, and a bit confusing. The back is glass, which feels nice but makes me very nervous that I will break it even with a case. Or scratch it. Why they cover a phone back in glass is beyond me. The screen is good, but I think it could be more vibrant. I messed with the display settings and found something better for my personal taste, but still, the screen could look better. It has 128GB of space. That's plenty for me, so not being expandable isn't a huge deal. I was hoping for wireless charging, and was a little disappointed, though I knew ahead of time so again, not a deal breaker. It's USB Type-C which I prefer. The fingerprint scanner is super fast and I like the placement square on the back, and not on the front like some. The camera is great and I love the monochrome mode. My Cricut SIM worked fine and I haven't had any issues sending or receiving MMS. This is a great phone. But it's not as great as I think it could be if Huawei tweaked the software.
and it's not as great as I expected for the money from Huawei. That probably sounds cheap, but Huawei knows how to make a great phone cheaper than anyone else. It could just be the software, so I am willing to give it some time, but this phone left me wondering if maybe I should have bought a OnePlus 5T, with 8 gigabits RAM for $300 less? Time will tell. I will update my review in week or sooner if there's something to mention. Update day 3 and it's still freezing randomly. I have to reboot to get out of certain apps. Not sure what the conflict is, I haven't been able to pinpoint it yet. Deleted Snapchat and Blink, but still freezing during certain apps. These are the same apps I had on my Mate 9 with no issues and less RAM, so I think it's a software conflict. Update there are still some glitches I don't like. For example when scrolling on a web page regardless of the browser I am using, it freezes and I have to wait several seconds for it to catch up. Annoying when reading. Also, the screen sometimes spins, and keeps spinning, even though the phone is perfectly stationary. Sometimes when you click on a link nothing happens and you have to close all programs and try again. Regardless of the browser or app, and sometimes all I get is a black screen when I wake it up. No pin screen, no fingerprint screen. Just blank black screen. Again, have to shut everything down. Click link in description for more reviews.